Hello, part two. <laughs> Technical difficulties. Okay, hopefully that better. Is that better? Can everybody see me? Can everybody hear me? <laughs> anyway, so what we're doing here is some nail art with the Magpie RD gels. So, where I was at before the connection rudely interrupted me. Great. Thank you, Sarah. <laughs> before the connection rudely interrupted me we have done this little pinwheel and i just cured this for a full 60 seconds so everything is nice and ready to go so now i'm just going to go in and add a little bit of like the fun for me i think adding pinks or greens to holidays i love pink for holidays so i'm just gonna do the same thing that i just did that I'm going to drag my brush through the gel paint and what that's going to do is just make your brush super smooth but you're still going to have all of the pigment in your brush. So I'm gonna just do a little bit of those little, what are those little, I was explaining ice cream the other day with the little ribbons. I'm gonna call these a ribbon. And I'm trying to keep in mind like the center point of where I started. Okay, so see, I don't like this line. So I'm gonna move it this way. Easy fix. I'm just gonna take a little OIB. Take that off. So when I'm doing line work, something that I think goes untalked about is your position of your brush, this line. So for these tinier lines, I'm trying to stay as parallel to the this nail as I can, and it's gonna give you just the tiniest little line. And then if you want it thicker, you just kind of lay down your brush See how it, I mean, obviously this line was already thick before, but. So parallel makes it skinny, flat makes it fat. Oh, put it on a shirt. <laughs> but skinny, we need something that matches skinny. Mm. Okay, great. So I'm just going to do that, and I'm going to use my little flash cure lamp to flash cure these little lines. So again, I'm just using this little flash cure lamp from Magpie, and I love this for this type of nail art. And I like to um, use it when I'm on my clients using, when I'm doing like an intricate um, character art. Mm-hmm. So I just like to pop that on and then you can, it's like flash curing, but you do want to make sure that you cure your full design at the end and make sure your brush and your palette is out of the way. So now I'm going to go in with this lighter pink and both of these, like all of these colors are already pre-mixed. So that cute pink are ready to go. Okay. This, is it this line that's bugging me or is it this line? Whatever. Sometimes you just have to roll with your design. It also helps if you plan out your designs. I'm just winging it. Okay, so see how I'm going a little bit flatter with my brush? That's going to make that line fatter. And I kind of want this to be a little bit bolder than that. Okay, it is this line. Because this one's going this way, this one's going this way, this one should be going this way. That's the issue, but we're just going to continue on here. It still looks like a peppermint, right? 
So you can see that the Magpie Artie gels are super pigmented. Like, I'm not even trying to get the pigment to lay down. So, I love the Artie gels. Okay, I'm going to flash cure that really quick. So I think that this is the point where you could just honestly be done. Like, you could just put this on a nail. It's cute. It's simple. But if you want to elevate it a little bit, so I'm going to add a little bit of shadowing. So I like to add shadowing to my designs because it makes it feel more like arty, artsy to me. So that's why I do it. But not everybody has to do it. So what I'm doing is just adding a little bit of black to my red to create kind of a darker red. Hopefully you can see that on this palette. See how it's a little bit darker there? And then you're just gonna pick, so when you're doing a shadow, there's stuff to it, but basically you pick a light source. So I'm just gonna go with the light source that I have right now. So my light is pointing at this design right here. So I'm going to pick the places where the light isn't hitting for my shadow. So, sometimes in designs you kind of have to just make it up, but I'm going to go on this side. And then I'm going to go on this side, so I'm just going to keep it all the same. On the same side of the little shark fins. Okay, this side is kicking my butt. No, yes. No, <laughs> yes. Why? No, no, yes. I think it's the three thing. I don't know what's happening. I think I'm tired. <laughs> okay, it worked out. So see how that already added some dimension to it and kind of made the design pop a little bit? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a little bit of pop coat and make kind of a jelly, you could say. So I'm just going to put a little bit of this on my palette. And then I'm going to take that same color and just mix it with my top coat. So what this is going to do is give me a thinner consistency that I can now take to this design and kind of bring the shadow out so it's not such a harsh line. Of course, this is just my way of doing the shadowing. You can take just that um, shadow color that I created and just kind of dab it and create not such a harsh line. But I find adding a little bit of top coat helps that kind of flow. If anybody has questions, please ask. So see how that kind of created like this shadow here? And it kind of gives it some depth. So now I'm just gonna take my, and I'm just dabbing this along. So I am, which brush am I using? Right now I'm using the Magpie Detailer and I have my illustrator as well. So my detailer is my tried and true. I honestly use this for literally everything. When I'm working at home on designs, I would fill this whole thing in with my <laughs> detailer brush, which is not efficient. Thank you, Sarah. So 
So I'm just picking up a little bit of top coat just to bring this out. And it might look like it's a little bit like smudgy right here. Um, it'll honestly kind of level itself out when you put top coat on it too. Yes, I will save the live. I had to start and re start and restart, so I'll save this portion. Basically, I just did the first pinwheel portion of the design. But you can see like just adding this little bit of shadowing really can make your design pop. So. And it doesn't take too much extra time if you're not crazy picky. I also like that it's a different tone of red. If you go in with black, your your shadow is going to be a lot harsher. And I think that that's something that I have learned recently is that your shadowing doesn't have to be black. It can be dark brown. It can be dark purple. It just depends on the design you're working with. So see how that just makes that pop a little? And then another thing that I like to do, I'm gonna cure this really quick. And I'm gonna cure this on my big lamp and give that a full cure. So the Magpie Arty Gels are a 60 second cure. So you wanna make sure you're giving them a full cure. Is it in focus? Where do I need to be in focus? I can't actually see, so hopefully we're in frame here. So now what I'm gonna do is do a little bit of shadowing down here. And I'm gonna take, should we do it the same? I'll show you what it looks like to do a black shadow. So I'm gonna take the tiniest bit of black arty and just mix it with my top coat. The black Arty Gel is so pigmented, like the, the, the tiniest goes the longest way. It's great for line work because honestly, you need one brush full and it'll go a long way. So I'm gonna do kind of the same, I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna go right close to it Right close to that hot pink line. Let's see what it looks like with the. Oh, see how that just creates like a little shadow. Hopefully you guys can see that it's just like creating a shadow on it. So it's just giving it a 3D effect. And I barely have any product on this brush. Most, you can see right there, hopefully, that most of the product is down in the belly of the brush. But on the tip where I'm using it, it's not actually full of product. So when I have that, I'm just going to drag it through and get everything nice and level again. Thank you, Sarah. Now this right here is going the wrong way, remember. It's just, it's just nail art. It doesn't have to be perfect. But if I was doing it the right way, this would be going this way. So if you practice this design, you want stuff to be going the same. So you kind of want it to just be like a pinwheel, not a pinwheel with a broken stem <laughs> but it's okay but see how that just adds a little bit of dimension to it and the black will when you put the um top coat it creates like a light gray so it's not so harsh so I really like mixing my black with my um top coat and there is jellies out there that you can just like a a gel polish 
it would be the same. So you wouldn't have to mix your stuff. So. All right, let's do the same thing with a highlight. So now you have your, your dimension in there with your shadowing. Let's add a little bit of a highlight to it, should we? So again, I'm gonna grab a little more top coat because I made that all red. And I'm gonna go with a little bit of pink. So instead of doing white, let's see how this goes. See how pigmented they are? Like that was the tiniest amount that went in that. So now I'm going to go the opposite side of my shadow. So if you put a shadow next to a highlight, it defeats the purpose. So right now, again, I'm picking my light source and it's coming from right here. Now this is kind of a hard design to show you on because it's kind of rounded but basically you want the highlight to be opposite there was a rule about highlights and I can't remember it but hopefully it makes sense so I'm just gonna go a little bit right here and I'm gonna kind of make it thicker but I'm not going to go all the way down in. So right here, there's a shadow, and I want it to stay there. So I'm going to kind of keep the highlight up here. And the nice thing with highlights and shadowing is you can always add more to it. One thing that I forgot to mention is when you're mixing your, your gels, you want to kind of stick to the, no, not kind of, you do want to stick to the same brand. So I'm using Magpie Artie Gels and I'm using Magpie Like a Diamond. Because they're the same brand, they're going to have, they're going to play well together. If I put another brand with these, it may not play well together and that might cause curing issues, all sorts of stuff. So just stick with your, your brand. Okay, see how that's kind of like bringing things to life there? Okay. Why does gel ball up on the end of the, of the brush? I tried to roll the brush while pulling through the product. Yes. So I don't know why it does it, but when you're, when you're trying to pull things through your brush, you might have too much product in your brush that is causing it to just stay up here. So... Even with like this, and I'm using the end of mine, I don't have very much product down in my barrel. But if I wanted to, I would like dab it in. Hopefully you can see that. I would dab it in and then twist and pull. And see how there's not as much there, but gravity also, let's see if it does it. Yep, it's gravity. So the more product that you have in your brush, the more it's going to pull when you're trying to paint. Does that make sense? So you might have too much product in your brush. So when I have this, I'm just going to drag this out, but I'm away from the product. I'm not picking any more up. I'm depositing more down so that you don't have that balling. So see now, is it in focus? Hopefully it is. Now... There's not a, a ball. So see, we learned some stuff here today. And I didn't cure that, so that's, that's doing great. But you can see it stayed in place, so that's good. Does that help, Christine? Hopefully. We both just learned something today. While that's curing, I'm thinking maybe we just need a little bit of white. 
pink is just a little bit faint. Okay. So now I'm just going to highlight one more time here. And I'm going to be a little bit more precise with this white because it will be brighter than that pink. Christine, you're not dumb. There's no dumb questions here. I think that we're all learning together. So, I mean, I didn't know that till I just tried it. So, no dumb questions here. So, I am going with kind of the same shape that is in this little shark head. Every time I learn, I feel like we learn something together. I think of that song from High School Musical, like, we're all in this together. Why do I always resort to singing on lives? Okay, anyway, so you can see that this is just creating this highlight and it's giving dimension. So this is an easy way to add some dimension. See how it kind of like brought that to life? It's cute. It's cute. Oh. I'm going to cure that all the way for a full 60 seconds now. What questions do we have on RD gels? Anything? Anything? No? Great. I really do love them. I think the pigmentation is awesome. I love the consistency that it really does stay where you put them. It's great for doing the like intricate line work, even... Um, character art or intricate designs, it's great. Oh, you know what we should do? I have an idea. I'm going to grab the silver one. Because... Ooh. Okay. 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 Christine... I cannot keep singing on lives, but you know I'm going to, so here we are. Okay, the silver one. The silver, the gold, the rose gold, the copper. Should I show you all them? Okay, let me grab them because I feel... I feel as if you need to see them all. So with these ones, you do want to make sure you stir them really good. They have a very fine... Like... Isn't she stunning? Pretty, 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 pretty. So, also, if you don't have one of these, it is an essential. I like to use a metal one because, like, an orange wood stick is disposable, which is great, but it sucks up all your product, and then you're wasting product, and then... You're sad. Okay, here's the silver one. Let me grab the other ones because I feel like you need to see them. Because we're in the year of, we're in the era of glitter, right? Is that what the kids are saying? The era of glitter. Okay, here's the gold one. Ooh, I really do love the gold one. Can you see the, the glitter in there? Cute. And then here's the copper, which I feel like sometimes the coppers don't get enough love. But this time of year, you're kidding. I love this one for like those little leafy details. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's the copper one. And then onyx is really pretty too. So it's got, it's got kind of a sheer, where'd my spatula go? It's a sheer black, gray. It's kind of like grace glitter, but finer. It's really pretty. 
I like to use this one as a full coverage gel. It's just, it's just delicious. So I'm gonna put that back. See how, see how the gels are when they're potted? So leaving everything sealed will help you from leaking. Okay, and the last one is the rose gold. Oh, maybe we should use rose gold on this instead of silver. What do you guys think? Let's look. Ooh. Fabulous. It is so pretty. Like, this for, yep, 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 yep. I really do like all of the the glittery ones because they're great for like just adding a a glitter nail. They'd be great under a glitter fade. Yeah. Should we do rose gold or should we do silver? Both are cute. You guys pick. Okay, I have one vote for rose gold, so rose gold it is. You could do both. A mixed metals. Oh, Gail said that um, Onyx is similar to the new Black Magic. That's very true. I love Black Magic. But Onyx is a little more sheer. Okay, how about we do both? So you can see both. All right. So I'll do the silver up in here in the pinwheel and then we'll do the rose gold on the outside. So what I'm gonna do now is just take a little bit on my glove here. And same thing, just right there. Oh, that's so pretty. And so effortlessly, like, pigmented. Yep, 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 yep. I love that. So cute. So something you could do is instead of highlighting with your um, white, let's see. If we highlight with silver, what will it look like? See, this is what happens when you start painting. Then you get start. Then you get creative, and then it gets out of hand. And then, yeah. Okay, so I don't love the the silver on top of the red but it is a thought you could you could do that but it just kind of dulls down the the highlight so i'm gonna flash that really quick and while that's going i'm gonna wipe that off One thing I'm going to tell you about this uh, little beauty here, don't ever jab it. Like, take care of this baby, and it'll take care of you. So when you're wiping things out, make sure you just go nice and softly pull straight down. It'll keep everything nice and, nice and straight. If you jam it in, it can get bent, and then you're sad, and then... Your brush is sad. So, you know, take care of your brush and it'll take care of you. Okay, so I'm going to do a little bit of rose gold in, down in here. This might be the wrong tone for the design for me. But it actually works. And you could play with where you put them and stuff. You know, this line really does bug me. <laughs> I 
again. This is supposed to go this way. Okay, so now that I've done all of those little extra pieces, I'm going to give it a full cure. And I think we're going to call her, call her good. Pretty cute. So th this design is one of those ones that you can take as far as you want. You can do it super simple by just doing the pinwheel with maybe a, a stripe in between. You could do it with glitter. You could do it with chrome. Oh, wouldn't that be freaking cute if you used the translucent arty gel and created you a pinwheel here and then chromed it? <gasps> okay, okay, we're gonna have we we only have so much time on this life, so we're gonna be done for the night. But that would be freaking cute. If somebody does it, let me know. If I was doing that. Depending on the chrome that you're using, you may want to do a color underneath and then chrome. But if you're doing like a full coverage, what's the candy? Candy is a red chrome. That's a full coverage chrome. So you wouldn't need a color underneath it. Oh, you know which one would be so cute? Emerald. Emerald is like a cute kind of teal green and that with like a lighter green like a mint green oh that would be flipping cute okay my top coat has glitter in it i'm excited for christmas nails is anybody else excited for christmas nails i try to enjoy the downtimes of not doing nail art, like right now. Okay. So when you have the designs on your nail, they tend to raise a little. So you're going to have layers. So you have your base coat, which is your color, and then you have your color, and then you have your what is a shadow and your highlight so that can create little layers so when you go to put your top coat on you kind of have to manipulate it so it is nice and smooth because you still want a line of light there's a fuzzy and it's just gonna have to stay because i think it's part of it but this is an absolute no for me. I would take it out if I was on a client. But it's definitely down in the gel. So make sure you're checking all of your lint. But always strive for a line of light that is very pretty. And if you're looking for your line of light and it's just not working, flip it over. With like a diamond, I'm finding that you have to let it kind of do its thing for a second and you have to let it just kind of, it's like this and it's gotta kind of like melt. <laughs> and it's actually really lovely. And swatches will always have a little dip in them. So if you're practicing your line of light, grab you some swatch, swatch sticks. It'll teach you how to like level things out if you can get a line of light straight on a swatch you're doing a really dang good job <laughs> oh okay wait I, I forgot to read comments so excited about we're talking about christmas nails oh sweater nails Mm-hmm. very cute love a sweater nail i like dark sweater nails like the, like a dark blue, a dark purple. Yeah, that's what I like. Because the minute you put life to sweater nails and it's white, mm -mm, mm -mm. so if you're new to sweater nails, just know that 95% of the time, if you do a lighter 
sweater, it will come back the same color as your client's foundation. It will pick up every little thing. So, word to the wise. Never a white. Never a white sweater, no. Unless your client insists. Okay. Anybody, anybody have any questions about anything? So now I'm just going to wipe off my inhibition layer really quick. Like a diamond does have an inhibition layer. Inhibition? Inhibition. Hmm. I don't know. <laughs> I should go on lives earlier when my brain is a why. A wife? Okay, give me a second. I gotta wipe off the alcohol from wiping off the inhibition layer. Here we go. Cute. Such a fun design. I love I love the pinwilly peppermint. So cute. You could you could take this design and make it a candy cane too. There's so many things. There's so many things. I can go into depth on... We could do more holiday. Should we do more holiday Instagram lives? You guys are going to have to give me ideas on what we're going to do, though. So I can start going once it... Once it starts flowing, it flows. But getting it to flow, sometimes hard. Okay, so one last thing about the Mad Cat Party Gels... Make sure that you are applying them thin. A little goes a long way. The pigmentation is awesome. The consistency is really great. Especially for our art-loving people out there like me. So yeah, I would love to do more lives, but I life does get in the way sometimes, but... If you guys have any ideas of what we should do, maybe we should do some more holiday art leading up. That'd be fun. Alrighty. Well, if you guys have any questions or anything, feel free to reach out. I'm always here if you have any questions. And until next time, bye.